talking about the second order integrated rate law equation. So just like the first order integrated rate law equation, we are trying to solve the same problems that we had uh, with the first order equations. Um, that being that over time, the concentration of reactant and therefore the rate is changing while the reaction is going on. So it makes it very difficult to tell what the concentration of my reactant is going to be at some time t. And to be able to do that, we need to involve calculus, and that's why it's called integrated. So with this, you got to remember that these equations look vastly different between first order and second order. So that's always the first thing you want to figure out is, you know, which one of these orders am I playing around with? So generally, the uh, exam writer will tell you it's second order, or they'll give you some type of information to find out it's second order. So here, if we look at a basic reaction, A going to B, um, and I tell you that it's second order, that means that the, the summation of all the rate law coefficients is two. So here's example of a rate law expression for a second order reaction. Rate is equal to K times my concentration of my reactant squared. So some of the, uh, overall, this is a second order reaction. So this is why we're using it in this case. Also, another way is when we look at K, the units on K are going to be one over molars per second. And remember that the units on K changes with the overall order of the reaction. So here, for all the second order um, reactions, K is equal to one over molar per second. So uh, once again, I'm not going to go into the derivation of this equation. I'll do that in a later video. But after we set up the base equation and take the integral of it, we end up with this form of the second order integrated rate law. So you can see with first order, it was, we were taking natural logs. With second order, we're taking the inverses. So once again, we start out, and one of the things we want to do, if you remember, what we wanted is to have some type of um, graph where it involves the concentration of my reactant versus time that is linear. So remember, if it's linear, then we can say I'm starting here, and I end up over here. It's a straight line. We know how to do that, and that's what allows us to find the concentration of our reactant at some time t. So remember this graph before we took the inverse was sort of curved. So here, when we've done this, it uh, you get what's called the linear form, and then there's probably going to be another form that we're going to use for equations. But here's y is equal to mx plus b, where uh, m is my slope. So m is the slope of this graph. So if I do an experiment where I look at the concentration of my reactants over time, and I graph that, so here it's 1 over the concentration of my reactant over time. If I graph that versus, um, or one over the concentration of reactant versus time, what we get is a graph that is linear and the slope is equal to, to k. So let's look at an actual application of this equation. So like I was talking about with first order reactions, it's really difficult to say. You look at this and you say, how do I know this is a second order integrated rate law equation versus the average rate law equation? So they look very, very similar. So here, the thing that gives it away is I've given you no information about what the concentration or what's going on at my 198 seconds. And that's a dead giveaway. So in order for it to be an average rate type of problem, I have to give you information about time and information about the concentration of reactants at some time t. So now that I know that it's an integrated rate law problem, then I got to take a second and say, is this first or second order? And remember, you cannot look at the equation itself and determine that. I need to give you this information some other way. Um, I'm telling you it's second order, but also I can look here and say, oh, my uh, K has got the units of 1 over molar per second. That's for second order reactions. So I know I'm going to be using my integrated rate law equation. And remember, as an exam writer, that when you look at this, unless you're going to get tricky, really there's only four variables inside of here. The initial concentration of my reactant, my final concentration, or my concentration reactant at some time T, the rate constant, and the time, t. So really, I have to give you three of these variables and have you calculate the fourth. So the classic ones is uh, where I give you kt and the initial concentration. And I say what's going to be the concentration of my reactant at some time, t. And the other one is where I give you the initial and the final concentrations, k. And I say, well, how long is it going to take to reach this concentration? So here, you say um, we're talking about finding the final concentration or the concentration at hi at some time t. 
The other place, uh, you got to make sure that you, you know, get the right concentrations in the right spot. So over here, this is our initial. Over here, this is the uh, final or concentration at time t. You got to make sure you get those in there. You also got to make sure that the units on time jive with your um, units of time in your case. So here it's seconds and seconds, so we're, we're good there. Um, and then the kind of the last place, and I've seen this quite a bit as a, a teacher, is um, where most people go wrong, and this is simply the math portion of it. So here, what I like to do is when we're doing an inverse, we want to crunch down all the numbers into one place and then do an inverse um, function on your calculator. So here, I multiply 0.5 and 198, that gives me 99. And here, I just take 1 divided by 0 0.01, that gives me 100. And you can look at the units, but it is 1 over molar. So when we do the inverse, we come out with the unit of molar, which is what we want, a concentration. So here, I add these two numbers together, together and I get 199. And then we want to take the inverse of both sides. So remember, this is a function on your calculator. You want to make sure that you understand how to do this. It should be a 1 over x function on there. So you plug in 199, and um, you hit the 1 over x function, and it will take the inverse. So we're literally what we're saying is 1 divided by 199 is equal to this number. That's what the function does. So my end answer is 0 0.050. And one thing you always want to do is um, look at the logic of what's going on with the question here. And how I do that is I know that during this reaction, the concentration of my reactants is going to go down. So if we started with 0 0.010, my final concentration is better be some number smaller than that or I've done something wrong. So uh, we have a number that's smaller than our initial concentration, so everything looks good.